In this exercise, we look at how to configure cross-account access between two AWS accounts. The purpose of cross-account access is to allow identities in one account access to services and resources in another account. Such cross-account access can be configured to allow one business to access AWS services of another business. So for example, an IT service provider that needs to log into your AWS account to configure some services for you. Another use case is where you have different AWS accounts for different types of workloads. An example here is say if a developer may need to log into the production account to deploy an application that has passed all of the rigorous testing and is ready to roll out. Let us look at how we configure cross account access in our example for our fictitious company, The Vacant Studio. So in our example, we have a management account and a development account that are part of the AWS organization. In real world, you're likely to have many more accounts. For example, you would have a separate identities account to ensure all identities are securely managed in one AWS account. This is much better than having multiple IAM accounts for the same person across multiple AWS accounts. Obviously, because this is just a lab, we're going to be working with just our management account and our development account. Now, users and groups are going to be created in the management account alone. For the purposes of this lab, we have two developers, Chris and Nancy, who need access to the Amazon S3 environment in the development account. They will be configuring S3 buckets, uploading and downloading data into those buckets, and if required, deleting buckets too. We do not want to create duplicate accounts for Chris and Nancy in the development account, so we make use of the IAM cross account access feature instead, which will allow our developers temporary access to the development account only when needed. In our cross account access setup, the development account is also known as the trusting account, as it will trust the identities from the management account to access its services and resources, and the management account is known as the trusted account. So let us look at how to configure cross account access for our scenario. Step one is to create an IAM role for cross account access. This role is created in the trusting account, the account that has services and resources you want to grant access to. When configuring the role for cross account access, you need to provide the AWS account ID of the account that hosts your identities. So in our case, it is the account ID of the management account. Next, as part of the role configuration, you attach a policy to the role that will grant the necessary permissions to the identities that assume the role. In our case, we will be granting full S3 access to allow Chris and Nancy to create buckets, upload and download objects, and delete buckets. For this lab, we will be naming our IAM role S3 Dev Role. Step two is where we assign the developers an IAM policy to assume the S3 Dev Role from the development account. In this step, we'll create an IAM policy and attach it to our developers, enabling them to be able to assume the S3 dev role. And finally, in step three, we will test our cross account access configuration. So let us get started with the lab. Join me in the AWS management console. Now, in order to complete this lab, you're going to need access to both the management account and the development account. I want to quickly take you to the management account and show you a couple of things first. Within the management account in IAM, I've already created a group called the developers group. And within the developers group, we've got two users, Chris and Nancy. Okay, so that already is in place. Chris and Nancy are members of the developers group. So let's take a look at step one of creating this IAM role. So step one, requires you to create the IAM role for cross account access. You need to identify the trusted account. And to do that, you need to make a note of the account ID of the trusted account, in this case, the management account, and also create a policy permission as part of the role. Let's jump back into the AWS Management Console and let me show you where this is. So back in the AWS Management Console, if you drop down the arrow next to your management account name, you will note that the account ID is displayed there. So I'm just gonna make a note of that account ID. And I'm gonna save that in a notepad document just for quick reference. Okay, there we are. Next, we're gonna jump into the development account and configure the IAM role in the development account. Okay, so here we are in the development account. Now in the development account, you wanna to go to the IAM dashboard. In there, click on roles, click create a new role and choose the option for another AWS account. Just bring up that notepad document where you had made a copy of the account ID for the management account. There it is there. 
So just copy that and place that into the account ID and then click next for permissions. Now Chris and Nancy need full access at this point in time to the S3 environment in the development account. They're gonna be creating buckets, deleting buckets, and uploading and downloading objects. Um, you can restrict this so that you only grant specific access to specific buckets, but that would require you to just amend the policy document accordingly. In the filter policies, just filter for S3 and select the S3 full access policy. Click next for tags. Let's give it a name. And we'll call it S3 dev role. Click next for review. And we'll use the same name as the role name. So that's the name of the role, S3 dev role. So allow developers to access the Amazon S3 environment in the development account. And then click create role. Okay, so that is the role created. Now that we have the role created, we need to move on to step two. Step two involves granting the developers an IAM policy to be able to assume the S3 dev role. Now this needs to be done in the management account because that's where the developers are hosted. So you need to go back into the management account. But before you do, there's a piece of information that you need from the development account. Specifically, you need the role ARN name, the Amazon resource name of that S3 dev role. So let's just go into the development account and get that role ARN name. Okay, so there's our S3 dev role in the development account. Just click into the role and there's your role ARN. You can copy that and put that into the notepad document that we're using for reference. Okay, and I'm just going to paste in the role ARN name in my notepad document for reference. And we're going to go back to the management account now. Okay, so here we are back in the management account. This is where Chris and Nancy reside. We're going to go ahead and create a policy that we're going to attach to Chris and Nancy which will allow them to assume the role. So go ahead and click Create Policy and then click on the JSON tab. And I've got a policy that you can use, which is a template policy that you would need to amend in order to reflect your ARN if you're doing this in your own accounts. And then you can actually configure this yourself as well. So let me just bring up the policy template. So this is the policy. Essentially, the policy has an effect of allow, and the action that's being allowed is the ability to assume a role. And the role that we're going to assume, or the resource that we're going to assume, is the ARN of the development account role that we created earlier. So you'll need to paste in the ARN of the S3 dev role in this particular section. If I bring up the other notepad document where I made a copy of the role ARN, there it is. Simply copy that and paste it within those quotation marks. Okay, so that's your role ARN in place. Go ahead and copy that entire policy and paste it into this JSON tab. Okay, click next for tags and we'll give it a tag, a name. So let's call this one S3 dev role access policy. So this is the policy that will allow our developers to be able to assume the role. Click next for review and we'll give it the same policy name, S3 Dev Role Access Policy. You can give it a description as well, and then click Create Policy. So that's our policy created. Now, what we need to do is attach this policy to the developers group. Okay, so there's our policy created. If we go back to groups and then click on our developers group, just there, and then we can click on permissions, click Add Permissions, Attach Policy, and find the policy that we just created. So there it is there, the S3 Dev Role Access Policy. That's the policy we're gonna to attach to the group. And click Add Permissions. Okay, so that's our policy attached to our group. We can now go ahead and test out whether or not Chris, our developer, is able to assume this role. So step three is basically to test access by switching roles. So we're gonna log on to the management account as Chris, and then we're gonna perform a role switch. So let's go back into the management console, but this time we're gonna log out from the console as the root user and log back in as Chris. Okay, so let's log out of the management account as a root user, okay? And we'll log back in as Chris. And we're gonna be logging in as an IAM user rather than the root user account. So we'll need the AWS account ID of the management account to do this. So click on IAM user 
and provide the 12 digit account ID, which if you remember, I've got it saved in my notepad reference document. Okay, so there it is there. So there's the account ID for my management account. Just copy that and paste it into the account ID. Okay, there it is there. Click next. And then let's log in as Chris. So we'll put in Chris's IAM username. Okay, and Chris's password. And then we'll sign in. So you'll see we've logged in as Chris in our management account. That's the account ID for the management account. What we need to do next is perform a role switch. So if we drop down this arrow, go to switch roles. So the first thing we need to do is provide the account ID of the development account. That is the account that we're gonna do a role switch into. So let's bring up that notepad document again. Okay, there it is there. And actually the account ID is part of the ARN of that role. So we'll just grab it from there and paste it into this account text box. There it is. Next, you need to provide the role that we're switching to. So the role is the S3 dev role. Okay, so I'll just put that in there as well. Okay, there it is, the S3 dev role. And I'm gonna give it a color just so that I can distinguish one role from another. So this is all for development. So we're gonna keep it at amber and then click switch role. At this point, we're logging in to the development account using that role. So Chris is using this role and logging into the vacant development account. Now in the vacant development account, if I go into EC2 as Chris, you should notice that I can't do much in this particular dashboard. I'm getting a lot of API errors. However, if I click on services and go down to Amazon S3, I'm able to see all of the existing buckets in Amazon S3 because remember the role grants me full access to S3 and I can go ahead and create a new bucket as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, the Vagan development bucket, we we'll place it in the London region. I'm gonna leave all the settings as it is for now and click create bucket. And that's it, my bucket has been successfully created. So, there it is there, the vacant development bucket. And obviously I can now upload, download objects and work with it as I need to as Chris, the developer. Now, once I've switched roles, obviously I've now inherited the permissions that have been granted by the role and that gives me full access to S3 in the development account. Remember, you can restrict the type of access that you're trying to grant through those policies. But for the purposes of this lab, I've given full S3 access. Now, once we've done our job and completed our tasks in the development account, we can exit out of this role, uh, we can relinquish this role, and we can go back to Chris in the management account. So click on back to Chris, and that will take us into the management account again, and we won't have access anymore until we do the role switch again. So you can see this is gonna come up with errors because obviously now I'm going back into the management account and there you go, and that's fine because that vacant development bucket is actually in the development account. But I can go back to the management console and provided that I had certain permissions in the management account, I can start working there. But I'm currently back in the management account. Now there's a couple of extra points that I wanna highlight about cross-account access that you need to be aware of. And the first one is that you can switch to a role only when you are signed in as an IAM user or a federated user. Root user accounts, cannot perform role switch. Also, when developers switch the role, they inherit the permissions of the development account, as in the case of our example, and they temporarily give up the permissions in the management account. At the same time, when they relinquish that role and go back into the management account, they can't access the development account anymore. You saw that error with that uh, bucket that we had created. We weren't able to access that bucket once we went back into the management account, once we did the role switch back into the management account. So just a few things that you need to be aware of. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this lab demonstration. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.